Hey y'all, it's Erin with Twirling Down Main Street. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Go ahead and subscribe. And if you're not new, then welcome back. So today we went to the Clearwater Aquarium. I shot my intro, but I guess I never hit record. So now you're at my house for the intro. <laughs> we have a tour scheduled and it was about 30 minutes after the aquarium opened. And they also have a new dolphin complex. So this complex is about four months old and it's awesome. It's huge and it has all this underwater viewing. So I wanted to show you all that as well. I do want to say I got a new microphone for my GoPro. It helps out, except for I didn't realize at first the microphone needs to be facing who's talking. So this is a bit of a problem at first because I was videoing like this and the microphone was facing away from me. I figured it out, but at the beginning, it's kind of hard to hear me. I am so sorry. I will get it figured out eventually. Also, it kind of goes like this. So you can occasionally see this top part. It's called a dead cat. It's like the windscreen on the microphone and you can kind of see it sometimes in the video. I'm still working on this. I will figure it all out, but enjoy the video. Yes, this is the new see the underwater viewing. So winter got in a fishing net entanglement and they had to amputate her tail. And so as you can see, she doesn't have her tail. So they actually have prosthetics that she uses and she has a prosthetic tail. She doesn't wear it all the time. She's figured out how to swim without it, but they do put it on her occasionally for her to get that exercise with the prosthetic. So this is the acrylic. It is 12.5 inches thick. But this is just massive. So if you're doing a guided tour, this is where the ticketing window is. And then you'll just kind of make a big circle and the dolphin viewing is out these doors. And you'll come to this guest services window and the tours meet here. Welcome to our hospital. This is our ICU. Currently we don't have any patients in here, which is a good thing. So we'll bring them into this section. And as just like an ICU, we're treating them in here until we get them stabilized to, to whatever condition we need. Then we'll move over this way. Turtles can come in with boat strikes, fishing hooks in their throats, things like that. So we'll bring them into this side here and then they go into one of these two sides. The difference is the ones on this side have a disease called fibrocellulitis. Not to us, but to turtles. Just like we've been doing social distancing for about a year now, we've been doing that out for years. <laughs> we can't get it but we don't want to pass it to these. So if I'm stationed over here, I'm not allowed to step over here. I have to wait for 12 hours, take a shower, change my clothes, do an alcohol wash before I'm allowed over here. I can't get it, but if I get it on me, I don't want to give it to the turtles on this side. We don't want to get them used to people. The windows are one-way glass. That way they can't see out, but we can see it from this way. In addition, when we feed them, we'll toss food this way. So as far as they're concerned, food magically falls from the sky. <laughs> of course, we're holding them when we're doing treatments, but we minimize that. We want to keep them as wild as possible. Ferlini got hit by a boat, so she's got a buoyancy issue. It turns out we were not able to fix that. The government, remember it's not us, it's the government, they decided she's not releasable. The thing is they haven't decided where her permanent home is going to be. So we're still treating her like she's going to be released. Because if we start building a relationship with her, that's because she's going to stay here. But if they decide, okay, she's going to the Atlanta Seaquarium. Well, we don't want to rip her out of our hands and over there because that's stress. So right now, she you know, hands off until they decide. And then whoever's going to be her permanent home, they'll build that relationship with her. Okay, over well, here's Turtolini. And you can see her little butt sticking up. Our hospital beds, who's what's where, their names, their status. This is the quarantine side. This is the regular rehab side. So it has the patients and their status, their beds and everything. This shows you the turtles that were released this year, last year, 
In 2018, we released 187 turtles. And that's that thing, rescue, rehab, and release. We started, uh, we started at six in the morning. The food is in the freezer at minus 40 degrees. We bring it out to be frosted, and then we start using it throughout the day. So how much do we make? A veterinarian, she made these food boards for us. Every patient here has their own specific diet. But you see how everybody's got their name on there. So Hope, Nick, PJ, everybody has their specific diet. So what she's doing, she's draining it, and then she's gonna add ice to it, with fresh ice, and then take it back up again. But temperature control is, is very, very crucial. Here. And this goes here, what you don't see in here is a CT scanner or an x-ray machine. We can't afford those, so what do we do? We take them to the People Hospital for CT scans and x-rays. Doors open over here, so the gates are open for the girls to come back and forth over here. So Hope, Winter, and PJ are in these combination of clothes at the moment. We can move them around as needed. The one in the middle is very cool. It's called a med pool. In the old days, we used to have to drain water to hold dolphins or take care of them and fill them back up again. Lots and lots of waste. So what we did instead with this one is it has a false floor. So the floor will raise or lower as we need. You'll notice the cranes up there. That way we can lift them and everything instead of using them by hand. All the water in here is at 79 degrees. It's 1.5 million gallons. It's filtered out every 90 minutes. Uh, this is 12 times more space than they had before. Wow. Um, so right now we currently have five dolphins in here. Okay, uh, we also practice taking blood, um, fecal samples and urine samples every day. We may not take it, but we practice every day because who likes to go get a blood draw? Not very much fun. What if I gave you $100 every time you went? I'm there every day, <laughs> okay? Well, the same with the dolphins. We give them a big party, things like that. Sometimes it's food, sometimes it's toys. But when we actually do it, this is no big deal. So we practice with nebulizers, things like that. People are they sick? No, but if we practice now, when we actually have to do it, it's no big deal. That's what we want. We want them to participate. Now, sometimes like Winter with her tail, she doesn't wear it all the time. She uses it for therapy. But every once in a while, it's like, you know what? I'm not feeling it. And she'll swim away. Okay, we back off. We wait an hour and then we'll try it again. Usually she's okay in putting it back on. Everything here is voluntary. We never force them to do anything. In here we have PJ also. She's, well, we rescued her about two years ago. She's our oldest dolphin. She's 49. She's partially deaf, partially blind, has arthritis. Her teeth are worn down. A shark bit her in the back. We think it's because she couldn't hear it coming. All right, our tour is over. So now we're just going through the aquarium on our own. So we're back down on level one. We're it's going a, through, it was uh, a 45 minute tour, hour. about an hour. Yeah. Um, it was $15, so that was, was awesome. Worth totally worth it. So this is Winter's Rescue Walk. This is all of the dolphins that are here. Winter, Nicholas, PJ, Hook, and Hope. And then there's also Hemingway, but I don't see him here. <laughs> Poor Hemingway. Then there's kind of a little virtual reality type thing where you can call the dolphins over on a screen. Another observation window. Oh, there's a lot of people over there, so I'm guessing the dolphins are over there. So that's Nicholas. He's 18 years old. Okay. And he's been with us pretty much 18 years. Wow. Uh, so if you see those white spots on his back, it's mm -hmm. from uh, sunburn. Sunburn, yeah. And then who's the other one back there? The other one is Hemingway. Okay. He's here as he has hearing loss and can't okay. echolocate. On our tour, they told us that Nicholas was a bit of a flirt. <laughs> oh, there he goes.
there's multiple of these huge acrylic viewing windows. So you can see from all around the tanks. There's Nicholas and Hemingway. This is the other side of the tank that they're in right now. It's Nicholas way back there. There's a bit of a glare. And then Hemingway's right there. And there's a nice area where you can sit and watch them. It's awesome. big boy right here so this area which is off of the new dolphin area is the original Clearwater Marine Aquarium and if you've seen dolphin tail this might look a little familiar for you because this is part of where they filmed it there's sea turtles So they do have the touch pool open for the stingrays because the stingrays have like an antibacterial coating on their skin. So basically their skin acts kind of like hand sanitizer for them and it won't harm them for us to touch them and they can't get COVID because their skin's the best antibacterial there is. So this is the gift shop in the original part of the aquarium. And this window right here is where the food prep room that we were in earlier. So it doesn't look like they're prepping anything right now. So if you've seen Dolphin Tail, there was a pelican named Rufus, which was probably Nick's favorite character in the whole movie. Oh yeah, so Rufus was named actually named Ricky. And he's here. But they have a wall where you can pose and see how you measure up against Rufus. There he is in the movie. Rufus is bigger. This is everything. There's multiple of these throughout, but artwork and cards and everything that people have sent for winter. Out here we have two more dolphins. They are rough toothed dolphins, Rex and Rudolph. This is kind of, this is the old aquarium. And then you take a little walkway over to see them. They do have boat tours that you can go on and see some dolphins and other wildlife and this is one of their boats right here and there's another one over here. At the Shark Bites restaurant here, this is their menu, they've got appetizers, cheeseburgers for kids, sandwiches and burgers, salads. I did ask and they do have gluten-free buns available. This is the mango grilled chicken sandwich with the gluten-free bun. It's pretty good. It's got provolone, mixed greens, tomato, and onion and mango chutney on it. And then this looks like a standard Udi's bun. This sandwich is extremely good. The mango chutney is like falling out of it. 
but it's delicious. I don't think I've ever had a sandwich that's tasted quite like this. Um, it's just really interesting with the mango. And it, the chicken is really good. It's tender, it's warm. And I would really recommend this sandwich here. So if you're looking to get lunch here, I would get this sandwich. So the Clearwater Marine Aquarium is an aquarium, but it's really a hospital first and foremost. So their goal is rescue, rehabilitation, and release. So they really don't want to keep any of the animals that they get. Their goal is to release them. And animals that they do have here full time are animals that are deemed non-releasable, not by the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, but by the government. They said they have about a 95% rehabilitation and release rate with the animals that they get. A lot of people were asking if the dolphins do tricks or anything. They don't. They only teach them skills that are necessary for either enrichment. So one of them, Nicholas, really likes to jump. So that's part of his exercise enrichment. And then most of the other things they teach them are so that they can care for them. This aquarium got no money from the movie Dolphin Tail. So all Dolphin Tail did for it basically was give it exposure. So before Dolphin Tail came out, they maybe got about five people a day, we were told. And now they have thousands of people a day come visit. They get their money from visitors just like us. You can also donate to the aquarium, but they don't get any of their money off of royalties or anything from the movie. There was, what, there was no billionaire from the movie. It was, yeah. nobody bought this place. It just, they, the movie gave them recognition of who they are and it attracts people here. And I think a common misconception, people that come here, they think it's an aquarium and there's gonna be animals that do shows, tr shows and stuff, but this is a hospital. You just can see the inner workings of it. And it, it's, a, really it's not a i mean there's entertainment value here but it's really uh like a good educational experience here um highly recommend doing the behind the scenes tour you learn a lot about what goes on here um, i've enjoyed it it's, it's been oh, yeah. a fantastic experience just learning a lot about these animals nothing though news yeah. it's great this facility also started as a condemned water treatment plant so when they first got it I forget when, I'll have to put the data in here. But when it first started, it was a water treatment plant that couldn't be used as water treatment. And so they were able to get it for a dollar a year and they've turned it into this hospital. So it's incredible what they've done. The new dolphin exhibit is brand new. It opened like four months ago and they're gonna be redoing some of this side. And hopefully I think she said they wanted to have manatees eventually and be able to rescue these manatees. If y'all are in any of the central Florida area or on the west coast of Florida, I really recommend coming out here. This has been awesome. Um, I recommend watching Dolphin Tale beforehand so you have a little bit of an idea and can kind of see some things that happened during the movie. Again, it's a fictional movie based off of a real story, so not everything's true in the movie, but it's still really cool to get to see it. Thank y'all so much for watching. Wear your mask, wash your hands, be safe, and we'll see you later. Thank you.